Detailing 101. Hi, I'm Ivan. This is DIY Detail. Today we're going to be going over different strategies for keeping your pads clean. Why do we need to keep our polishing pads clean? Well, first of all, never put clean polish on a dirty pad. Your pad, when it's clean and when it's slightly damp, has a much better cutting ability and finishing ability. So your job is going to go a lot faster and a lot easier. Now, there's professional tools that are sold, like this pad washer, to make pad washing easy, safe, fast, and efficient. But we'll show you a couple different strategies first. First of all, you don't have a pad washer. One way of doing it is take a towel from your wash bucket, soak in rinse this wash. Now we want to wring it out so it's just damp. Then from there, fold the towel in four, and you can run the towel against the pad. That's one strategy, and you do get a little bit off the, the pad. The next one requires a bit of help from your kitchen, and that's using a bowl. In the bowl, I have some water. I'm gonna add just a little bit of rinseless wash. Now we're going to take our machine and just dunk the pad so you can see how much polish and residue is on here. I'm just going to touch the pad to the surface of the water. And then from there, massage it just a little bit. And with another bucket, spin out the moisture. Now, have a clean pad. You don't want to leave your pad wet, and by spinning it at the full speed of the machine, you will get a pad that's just damp. And don't worry, it's not gonna affect the polish. Actually, it's gonna make the polish a little better. Another way of cleaning your pad is to have a couple pads on rotation that you can take out, put in your wash bucket, and keep moving them. Now, when we're wanting to remove and apply a pad to the polisher, first of all, let the pad cool down just a little bit. Those little Velcro fingers, if you rip them off as soon as you're done polishing, you can actually remove some of those little Velcro fingers. So you wanna be careful. When you remove your pad, when you go to put your clean pad on, and this is a dirty pad we'll show you in the pad washer here, you can use just a regular socket and there's a hole in the center and there's a hole in the center of the pad. And now your pad is perfectly aligned. With the pad washer, it has a little internal pump. And that pump is actuated by moving up and down with the platen. And if I just move a little bit, you can see I've got a bit of water coming up. What you want to do is, when you're pumping on the pad washer, pump rapidly. Not hard, rapidly. And if you go quickly, you get a nice little fountain but your pad is gonna be there to absorb that liquid. We take our machine and two or three hits is all you need. And now you can see where the liquid is all on the pad. Then speed one or speed two on a rotary. Move the pad around the surface of the washer then bring it up to speed six. You lift your pad up just a quarter inch, just so it's not touching the machine. Now we have a nice clean pad again. With a wool pad, it's the same. Now, some people have different strategies for cleaning pads, and one of them, is using air tools. Blowing out a pad is a great way of destroying a pad because what you're doing is that compressed air, or some people even use a pressure washer, that compressed air is getting in those pores of the foam and blowing them apart. The pores of the foam have a little membrane between each little bubble. And when you use compressed air or when you use high pressure water, you're actually breaking apart that little membrane and your pad may look good, but you've reduced the function of the pad. So you don't want to be blowing with compressed air. 
The other thing that compressed air does is creates dust everywhere and you end up with a dry pad. We never want to polish with a dry pad if we can at all avoid it. Finally, all clean. When your pad is really saturated, it's not working for you. Spray a bit of all clean on, and then you can use a brush to lift the fibers of the wool, work the all clean into it. And then we can use either strategy. We can use the pad washer or we can just use our little bowl here. So now I have the liquid on here, work it around with my fingers. Then back to my bucket. Now we have a nice clean pad. On a dual action machine, one thing that's important is to make sure your machine is free spinning. If it's not free spinning, there are modifications that can be done to the odd little machine that isn't free spinning. And when it's spinning, you're getting oscillation. And then all of a sudden, when the pad gets to just the right weight, it starts spinning and oscillating at the same time. When you get to that free spinning action, that's when you know your pad is actually perfectly weighted for your machine. And then apply your polish and start polishing. One spray of the polish gets it everywhere and I'm ready to polish. Next, applying the polish to the pad. A lot of people have concerns with the gold standard that they just get like a, a blob because they're not spraying enough. And when you get a drop like that, it's actually not what you want. What you want is to use your sprayer a little like you're angry at it, meaning that you give one very quick, fast spray. The other thing is you don't want to be here and spraying like this. You want to be very close. You don't want to try to spray the whole pad. We actually want to concentrate just on one half because we're going to have the pad spinning. And while it's spinning, One little spray, and now I've got good, even coverage everywhere. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. We'll see you in the next Detailing 101.